Together, we can save lives. Hey guys, how are you doing? It's your boy DC and this is Out of the Fog and we're a local show that goes across the province hanging out with all sorts of everyday folks with big ideas making cool stuff happen. That's what I love. Tonight we got more coming at you. It's Marin and it's Herbert talking about an incredible book that they're bringing to life and we're going to zoom in on what it takes to make a book come true. Then we have East Coast Keto. It is Bobby and Jeff talking to us, having laughs, Nan, Cabbage and the whole lot. You're going to check it all out and what they're doing to keep everything fit and moving forward with real food. But first, Darcy Scott, local singer-songwriter, doing big things, wicked songs out. This is the first of two you're gonna hear tonight. Bend in air and then come right on back because it's out of the fog, baby. It was one bad photo just not ready, a little unsteady Someone catch your bad side But did they know Nobody was thinking Now you're sinking Quicksand in a landslide My head's underwater But still you can hear The sound of a thousand words Telling half of the story Sorry, it's not the end of the world. The bigger picture is more than a thousand words. Everybody sharing it. They say they're joking, but you're the one choking on the punchline. Don't be scared of it. Somebody else will take the hit the next time. Remember how you felt the first time you heard the sound of a thousand words telling half of the story. Sorry, it's not the end of the world. The bigger picture is more than a thousand words. The hero today could be the fool of tomorrow. Let go of your sorrow, frame by frame. Everything changes faster than the sound. Of a thousand words Telling half of the story Nobody's sorry It's not the end of the world The bigger picture is more than a thousand words Is more than a thousand words. Oh. You're watching Rogers TV, St. John's. It is Jason Piercy, host of Out of the Fog on Tuesday nights at 7.30. You're definitely going to want to watch because you never know what I'm going to get into. It's all about community. It's all about you. So watch Tuesday, 7.30. Watching Rogers TV. Welcome back.
back, everybody. It is Out of the Fog, and I'm pumped to have these boys on the show tonight. Well, the man to my immediate left is Marin Darmancow, and he is a man that I have heard about in the advertising design artist networks for years. I can't even believe I'm sitting next to him now today. And of course, his buddy Herb and the boys work together on a book, and you're going to talk all about it tonight. Sound good? Great stuff. Great. And Marin, you're awfully cool over there, bud. I'm playing a second violin because he's the author. You will start punishing him first. Oh, I love that one. You're being very direct now. So it's you in the hot seat. Are you ready? Well, it's kind of like hockey players, you know? It's like always <laughs> passing the, uh, the accolades on to the team. Uh, but the reality is, is that we are a team, and it's, I would say it's 50-50. Well, there you go. Okay. Well, that's a nice man, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you want to work with him no. on some things. Seems that's why I work with him. Well, Otherwise, exactly. I will turn him my back on him. <laughs> well, you never would do it in TV, at least, maybe after the show. So I want to ask you, what led you into being the author of a book like the one we're going to learn about tonight? The, you know, the, I, I, I've written three novels and, uh, and a book of poetry. Hmm. And all of them come from different kinds of inspiration. Um, Sometimes very conscious, sometimes unconscious in some ways. And so sometimes when you wake up in the morning, an idea will come to your head. I was sitting around the supper table one evening. My wife uh, likes to cook ethnic food. We had uh, my, uh, my son and his family over. And um, the names of the, the foods were, were outlandish. Huka Muka, Hunchapaka. And so it, was, it got to be quite funny, the, the names of these foods. And in fact, the kids were even saying, instead of passing salt, pass the Hunchamuchu. <laughs> and, and so that was the end of that. Until the next morning, uh, the next morning I got up and thinking about the night before, and, and all of a sudden the word Machu Picchu came to me. And Machu Picchu, and I said, that was one of the seven wonders of the world, yeah. And from that moment on, I sat down and I wrote the story. The story just picked up from that one instance that had that not happened the night before, this story would not exist. Um, so it's quite fascinating, even for me as the writer, mm -hmm. how these things unfold and unravel. So I wrote it in a matter of a month. My previous novels were, it took four years to write each one of them. And so it had this amazing energy and momentum to it. And having known Merrim, I was doing some work for him as well, some woodwork for him. I brought it over to, I read it to him. Uh, it was done in poems, it was done in rhyme. Mm. Uh, the moment he heard it, he said, I want to be a part of this. And, and from that moment onwards, uh, it's just been a steady go, hasn't it, Marin? <laughs> we haven't stopped every day, every hour. This man has worked literally 12 hours a day doing these beautiful, I, I requested that he do it in watercolor. Mm. That's how I imagined it, because it's supposed to be a dreamscape. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he has done so, and he has done so brilliantly. Marin, an artist of many colors, digital, by hand, what led you to your art? Wow, you started with a very difficult question. <laughs> I don't know how to answer. Maybe I have to go back to my childhood. Please do. I would say probably art was part of my survival path. Mm. Although I studied uh, nuclear physics and literature and art, I was mostly attracted to art because maybe it was an escapism. I do not know the, the answer. But anyway, my father died when I was one year old. And probably in a way, he created my path. Probably, because I'm not sure that we live in a world that our paths are already clear or we create our paths. Mm -hmm. I try to to create my own. How, how close I was to create my own, or it was determined before I was born, nobody knows this answer. Actually, some, even some questions are wrong, not only answers. Hmm. So anyway, back on your question about art, I, I, I worked, I did art since I was a child. And I loved it because it created 
another world for me mm -hmm. that I could f comfortably live because the world was sometimes cruel to me. Sure. But uh, the art created me another world that I can live happily. We're hearing a, a beautiful accent. Oh yeah, because I am from the southern shore. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say goobies actually. Of Europe. Thanks, oh, yeah. I see what you did there. Bulgaria in particular. Okay, thank you for that. And so I will ask you, you guys meet, you start working together. The images come from the words that you see. What are your hopes for this book? Uh, I, I said only a few minutes ago, my hopes is to create the best thing we can possibly create. That's it. Uh, and, uh, and I will not go back on that. <laughs> and, uh, um, but I don't know if I can say this on, on television, but I'll say it anyway. Is I, I'm hoping that this book will be seen around the world. I really do. I've never felt that way about any of my work before. But there's something magical about this book. Not only is it talk about the seven wonders of the world, which makes it a world story. Uh, in essence, there is uh, some moral implications in it, some ethical implications in it for kids that are extremely important. And uh, it holds all the attributes that I, that I think a good book should hold. I, I believe that strongly. That's why we're putting so much into this, because uh, both of us realize that it's something special. But no, I, I, you know, again, to have done the best you can do is uh, is the ultimate, and uh, and and I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. But uh, but I see, on a larger, wider level, that this has the makings of something that could be, um, that could be a worldwide seller. I really, really do. It, it may not get past um, uh, the local bookstore, but in my heart, that's how I feel. Well, I appreciate you both. And as an artist myself, to come together to create something like you have is exciting. During this interview, we've been seeing the photos from the book that we're gonna see once it's out. How can folks in our final moment access information about how to buy the book when it's available? How can they reach out to learn more? Please let us know. Uh, I would say that the, the number seven, which is a part of the book, gave us a chance to create further sevens. For example, we plan, who is the author of the music and the wordsmith. I am responsible to do the design, the illustrations, and to market the book. Oh, wow. So, we plan to launch the book seven minutes <laughs> past 7 p.m. on the seventh day of July, which is the seventh month, <laughs> on number seven Water Street, which is an empty lot now. We are currently negotiating the rent for this spot on the 7th of July. So uh, there is an excitement about the number seven, which is a kind of lucky number for the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, and we will see what happens on the 7th of July. Well, now I'm in trance and I can't wait. You know the boys, check out the book, more to come, and I'm gonna let you guys know when it's on the street. It's out of the fog. We'll be right back after this break. Thanks, boys. Good, nice. All right, girls. Uh, Mom, you said it's played again. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. It was our 35th anniversary. To celebrate, we were on our way to Mama Rosie's, where we had our first date. That's when we heard coming from the radio. So we stopped and listened. It helped us get to safety. So when I think of, I think of our anniversary, because now we have even more to celebrate. Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog. And just like that, they're back in the house talking keto round two with a wicked new book to share. 
It is Jeff and Bobby. What is up, guys? Is it fun? Living life? Living life. Living life. The masks are off tonight. Yep. The masks are off, and we're getting into and it. gloves. Oh, exactly. <laughs> it's all off, yeah. Come on, we go. We will. This book, East Coast Keto, Volume 2. Now, if you know what's up, you've been in all the major bookstores and online checking out stuff, and you've seen East Coast Keto, Volume 1. I'm going to ask you a question. How amazing has the success of East Coast Keto been so far, tell me everything. It's been kind of crazy, kind to be of honest with you. There's snake. no yeah. way we would have anticipated sitting here the first time, let alone the second. It's wild. And here we are. It's so crazy. Yep. I want to ask you a question. Outside of keto and all the things that we're going to get into in specifics, from cabbage to nan and everything down the line, what led you there? What led you to exploring cooking keto style? So we've always been foodies. But um, we kind of got to the point where we were liking our food a little bit too much. <laughs> and we, we were, were getting, getting, yeah. getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> and I'm not a really vain woman, but I was at the point where if I ran into someone that I hadn't seen for years, I was physically embarrassed of myself. And Interesting. That's, that's never a good place to be. Sure not. So we dug in, we did our research, and we eventually stumbled upon, um, got the, the, uh, the tick the from our doctor. Thing. Yeah, and, and away we went. Um, so much about health and uh, diet and fitness, uh, there's a lot of obsessiveness and a lot of recklessness and a lot of half-cocked guns going yep. off. So you guys did the research, started delving into foods, and P.S., remind everyone at home watching, put keto in a nutshell. Keto in a nutshell is eating real food. We step away from all the boxes and all the cartons and all the cans, and we try to have a piece of meat, a piece of fish, and some vegetables. You know, I don't get that. Right? I mean, if, if you go to your doctor and tell them that you're starting keto, ooh, that could, to them, that could mean the pill or the coffee or the potions. Real keto is eating real food. Real food, eh? Real food. It's kind of like going back to our grandparents' age or our great-grandparents' age where they didn't have the great big supermarkets full of all of the products, and they just ate what they grew. They, you know, grew some turnip. They grew some carrots. Some cabbage. A bit of spinach, a bit of cabbage. You got did it. Did Nan grow that? Nan grew that. She now, you knew so. I'd bring it back to Nan <laughs> and the cabbage. I'd warned you. Um, I want you to talk about how growing up and the relationship between you and your family, your grandmother, inspired indirectly a lot of what we're going to see in this book. Well, I have all of my grandmother's cookbooks at home. And um, not only do I have her cookbooks, but I have all of her little notes that she's written on the sides. And I think they'll, they'll appear maybe in a future publication. Oh. But it's almost like Nan is kind of guiding me to where I want to go. And, and really, we're creating our traditional recipes but we're creating them in a way that you can eat them guilt-free. Well, I know there was one recipe there, someone's cake, and her phone number was next to it, four digits, because that's, at the time, that's Back all you had to dial. in the olden days, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It was quite a little history lesson as you were someone through all those books and all the memories and the smells and the pages and the recipes that you remember growing up on. It must have been quite uh, romantic and nostalgic for you, was it, it? It is very much so. So much that if I were to take that book now and read you some of the descriptions, <laughs> I would get teary-eyed, and I'm not joking. Do you hear your um, Nan's voice when you are reading some of those words? If I had a dime for every time I say it, I was scraping out a bowl, and I said, waste not, want not. Make sure you're getting it all. That's my name. Yeah? Yeah. Do you think that these recipes and working together so closely um, has been great to strengthen what already is an amazing relationship and partnership between you both? In a big way, I think. I, I'm just pretending I like them. <laughs> <laughs> she's waiting for the royalty checks to come thumbing right. through for this beauty, and she's out. Do you know what? People, our, our friends, our closest kind of tease us because if anything, we're always holding hands and That's we're cute. always snuggled up. And, you know, the whole pandemic living thing, I think there's a lot of couples out there who are, you know, at the end of the day, just let me out of here. <laughs> but we really enjoy working together. To the point where one day, or last summer at one point, I took a couple of weeks off vacation. And she says to me, are you getting sick of hanging around me all the time. And I said, I just took two weeks off so we can spend more time together. <laughs> How important is encouragement, um, as you guys both do, everything it takes to bring a book into the world? Because FYI, 
It ain't like write it down, push it out, make the money, call it a day. The effort that goes from the idea to the work and look at this, the layouts, the photos, the ideas, the creativity, the passion, the sleepless nights, the meeting after meeting, the publishing. I mean, I can go on. I've been lucky to be a part of a lot of journeys for authors in different regards. How rewarding is it now? When we have members, and we run a bunch of different groups and, and whatnot, but when we have members come to us, whether it's online, virtual, or distance, and say to us that you guys saved my life. Mm. That's big stuff. That's, That's big, big stuff. stuff. Yeah, and you know what? Our, our brand is all about one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. You know, you, there's a lot of programs out there where, you know, this is wrong and this is wrong, and, and we're not about that at all because we're all human. We all make mistakes, and it's literally about picking yourself up, dusting yourself off. Today's a brand new day. Let's keep on doing the best we can. And making a pot of chili while you're at it. Making some a pig pot candy, of maybe. Even. Oh, yes. Oh, I saw the pig candy. There is always pig candy in it. Is fridge. there? Okay, I hope so. And I want to remind everyone at home keto. Check it out. Talk to your doctor about it. It's obviously something that these two folks are looking like a million bucks. I see the photo sometimes, you know, that you put up on the Instagram. Check out their Instagram. And it's like, here's us then, here's us now. Does it feel good to be inspiring so many people to take that journey and experiment with food and healthy eating and wellness in its own regard? How does that make you feel? It's kind of mind-blowing, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I'm just a regular girl from out around the bay, and, you know, here I am, like Jeff said. We have people looking at us and saying, you've saved my life. And it's, it's big. Um, but, yeah, my feet are grounded on the floor and... Uh, Jacked up three inches with those heels on. No kidding, right? <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of fun. And to the point now where on um, Saturdays we do uh, online weekly cook-alongs. Oh, I love that. That is amazing. So, listen, we're going to break out. I want to leave everybody with the key information so they can get on the old Google machine and check you guys out and see more. What are the best ways for folks to get at you? EastCoastKeto.com. Boom. Just like that? Just, Just like that. like and that. And you don't forget it. That goes everywhere from there. I love it. I can't wait to see everything you guys got going on and what's upcoming. And I can't wait for the Nanny's Cookbook Remix to come out. Exciting. Right? This is going to be the next joy. You'll be on the show again. Would, uh, you, would you come back? By all means. I love it. Guys, I want you to experience East Coast Keto. This is the book. There's a subscription inside, but guess what? It's just for you, baby. All you got to do is write in, slide into our DMs, and say, I want that book, and you will have a copy of East Coast Keto, Volume 2. Thank you guys so much. I love you. It's so deadly to hang out with you again. You come back? Will so. Love it. Definitely. This is Out of the Fog. Right back after this break. Well, guys, what a wicked old time we had again tonight here on Out of the Fog from Bobby and Jeff, Herbert and Marin, all authors of big dreams doing cool stuff. And to sing us out, the second of two songs tonight we're going to hear from Darcy Scott. This is Out of the Fog. We'll see you guys next time. Just give me a sign It's better to feel the way I feel At least I know that I'm still real but I wouldn't wish this on anyone else A simple misconception Led to this deflection
You're coming home tonight, and I'd pull myself together in a heartbeat. Remember that night, and you told me you loved me, and you took my love and kicked it out the door. Give me a sign if you're coming home tonight. There's a broken boy and bottle on the table.